Chemical reactions are represented as equations that show the substances undergoing a physical or chemical change. This is the reaction of iron and oxygen gas to produce iron 3 oxide. The substances on the left side of the arrow are called reactants, and those on the right side of the arrow are called products. And the reactants and products are separated by an arrow. We can also show the state of matter for each substance in our reaction. To do this, we use an abbreviation in parentheses. So for solids, we use S, liquids, L, gas, G, and for aqueous solutions, AQ. So let's add states of matter to our equation. Iron is a solid, O2 is a gas, and iron 3 oxide is a solid. All chemical equations must be balanced, which means that we must have equal numbers of atoms of each element on the reactant side and the product side. Let's take a look at our reaction and see if it is balanced. The reactant side we have iron and we have one and the oxygen we have two. On the product side we have two iron and we have three oxygen. We can see that we don't have a balanced reaction. To balance this reaction, we're going to use coefficients. A coefficient is a number placed to the left or in front of the formula. So we have one iron on the left side and we have two iron on the right side. So what can we place in front of the iron on the reactant side so that we have the same number of iron atoms on both sides? Well, it looks like we can try two. And if we do that, then we have two iron on the left and we have two iron on the right. So that is balanced. Now let's look at the oxygen. We have two oxygen on the left and three oxygen on the right. So let's try putting a three in front of the oxygen on the left, which would give me six. And if we put a two on the iron three oxide on the right, that would also give me six oxygen, which means that our oxygen is balanced. But putting this two in front of the iron three oxide affects the number of iron as well. So we must change that to four, which means now my iron isn't balanced anymore. Since we have four iron on the right, and only two iron on the left, let's change this two here to a four so that my iron is now balanced again. Now we have a balanced equation. 4Fe plus 3O2 gives us 2Fe2O3. The coefficients represent the relative number of reactants and products, and so they are the ratio of the reactants and products in this equation. We can read this equation using moles by saying 4 moles of Fe react with 3 moles of O2 to produce 2 moles of Fe2O3. It's also important to remember that those coefficients are ratios, and so we could also say that 8 moles of iron react with 6 moles of O2 to produce 4 moles of Fe2O3. Okay, let's try to balance another equation. Here we have C3H8 plus O2 produces CO2 and H2O. 
Let's first start by adding up all of the elements on each side. So on the left, we've got three carbon. We have eight hydrogen and we have two oxygen. And on the right, we have one carbon, we have two hydrogen, and we have three total oxygen. We can see that we have two from the carbon dioxide and one from the water. Okay, let's start with the carbon. We've got three on the left and one on the right. So I'm going to try three in front of the carbon dioxide, which gives me three carbon. But remember that also changes the number of oxygen. So now we have six from the carbon dioxide plus one from the water, which gives me seven oxygen. And our carbon is balanced. So let's move on to the hydrogen. We have eight on the left and we have two on the right. So I'm going to try a four, which gives me now eight hydrogen. But once again, we've changed the number of oxygen. So we have three times two, six coming from the carbon dioxide, plus four from the water, which is 10. And we can see hydrogen is now balanced. And we've got two oxygen on the left, 10 on the right. So let's put a five in front of the O2 on the left, which now gives me 10, and our oxygen is balanced. So our balanced chemical equation is one mole of C3H8 reacts with five moles of O2 to produce three moles of CO2 and four moles of H2O. Let's try one more example. Here we have the reaction of aluminum and sulfuric acid to produce aluminum sulfate and hydrogen gas. Let's start the same way by counting up all of the atoms on both sides. So aluminum on the left, we have one. Hydrogen, we have two. And we can count the sulfur and the oxygen separately, but if we can recognize that that is the sulfate atom, we can count that as one group because it appears as sulfate on the product side as well. That might make things a little bit easier for us. Let's move over to the right side. We have two aluminum. We have two hydrogen. And once again, here's the sulfate ion. And we have three of those. Okay, let's start with the aluminum. We have one on the left side, we have two on the right side. So let's put a two in front of the aluminum, giving us two aluminum on the left, two aluminum on the right, and that is balanced. Uh, let's move on to hydrogen. It looks like we already have balanced hydrogen. We have two on the left and two on the right. So let's move down to the sulfate. We have one sulfate on the left, we have three on the right. And so let's try a three here on the left, which means that we now have three sulfate, but we also change the number of hydrogen from two to six. So our sulfate is balanced, but now our hydrogen isn't. Since we have two hydrogen on the right and six on the left, let's try a three, which will change the number of hydrogen on the right to six, meaning that we now have balanced hydrogen. So our balanced equation can be read as two moles of aluminum plus three moles of sulfuric acid produces one mole of aluminum sulfate plus three moles of hydrogen gas.